my goodness! Holy sh! Well, folks, look what I brought home. As if I needed any more projects, but I saw it on Facebook Marketplace and I had to go after it. Just brought it home yesterday. This is not a Jeep. This is an M151A2. These were, if my research is correct, these were actually um, designed, engineered, whatever you want to call it, by the Ford Motor Company in the 50s for the military. And initially when they started building them in the early 60s, Ford was building them. And then the contract went to somebody else for a few years, and Ford got the contract back. And then they eventually ended up being made by AM General by the time these things were made in the 70s and late, not late, but 70s and the 80s. Uh, this particular one is, yeah, the last variant, which makes it the, like I already said, the M151A2. It's full independent suspension, uh, four-cylinder engine, manual transmission. Now the reason you don't see a lot of these out there is because the military or somebody in the government deemed them unsafe to be used on public roadways because of the design of the rear suspension. And that was kind of the case with the early ones. These later ones were better, but they still, yeah. And when the military got rid of them, they would either cut them into pieces or crush them. Now some people would get them and get the parts and weld them together. And the guy I got this from said that was the case with this one. It had been cut apart and welded together, but honestly, I'm not seeing where that is the case. This is pretty mangled here and the other side is too, but I'm not really seeing any welds putting it back together. Maybe the military mangled it up a little bit and then the buyer got it home and kind of straightened it out a little bit. Yeah, it's really whammied here. But uh, anyway, this is a unibody design. Looking at the pictures of this, I almost canceled my trip to go look at it. Well, you guys know how it is. Uh, you go to look at something in person, it's a lot worse than it was in the pictures. This one was just the opposite. I got there and looked at it. First thing I did was check the engine. It's stuck. I believe it's stuck. We'll get to that in a second. Didn't surprise me at all. It's been sitting for years without a hood on it. I did get a hood with it. It just wasn't on it, but I couldn't get it to budge. I wasn't too concerned with that. I can always swap something else into that. My two main concerns were the drivetrain underneath, the axles, if all that was intact in there and then the, the unibody design. Once I stuck my head underneath this and it looked, there is rust obviously, but all the structural parts of it looked really solid to me. So I was like, yeah, I'll take it. Now when we went to load it, we could not get the transmission out of gear. It is quite stuck. Now there was a rubber boot on it and it had a slit in it. And uh, I'm wondering if, yeah, for years it's been getting rainwater down in it. It might be just the shifter stuck, might be the whole transmission stuck. But anyway, we, I went ahead and ripped the boot off and we tried pouring a little transmission fluid in there to get the, yeah, honestly, the shifter does move a little, so I don't know what's going on in there. I, like I said, I'm wondering if just years and years of sitting outside, that transmission might be full of water and it's stuck. Who knows, the engine may not be stuck. The problem might be in the transmission and then the engine won't, move because it's stuck to the transmission but anyway I'm gonna deal with that a little bit today I'm gonna pull all this inspection cover off maybe pull the shifter out maybe even pull the top of the transmission off to see what's going on there and then we'll take it from there uh, the engine when you check the oil it's where it should be but it is a little bit full and you can see a little bit of milkiness there on the end of the dipstick if I'm getting it focused properly so it most likely has some water in it. And it's been sitting, yeah, for who knows how long with the air intake unhooked. But at least it's a side draft carb where it's not pointing straight up. Look at the size of that generator in there. That thing is huge. It is a mechanical clutch. Even pushing down on the clutch. didn't help getting the transmission out of gear but uh, anyway I'm not really sure what my plan is with it I just had to have it if I can't get the engine freed up or the transmission or whatever the issue is I'm not above uh, swapping something else into it supposedly these don't have a low range in the transfer case first and reverse in the transmission are super low 
so that kind of negated the need for a low range in the transmission this lever here that is just your in and out two and four wheel drive i don't know what the final gearing is in the axles or anything like that but uh, uh oh another interesting thing went to load it um obviously engine transmission whatever was stuck couldn't get it out of gear so i had to actually physically drag it up on the trailer with the winch all four tires dragging got a part way up the ramps and something came loose the front wheel started turning and one rear wheel started turning but the other rear wheel was turning backwards so something was still holding the rear end that's a rear end will do that um, if yeah you hold the the uh, pinion and drag it if either both tires are going to drag or one tire will go the proper direction which forces the other one to go backwards but anyway whatever it was that broke loose i wasn't too concerned about it because like yeah it's starting to roll now it's it was a done deal at that point anyway, but on the way home at a gas stop, I noticed this. That is what let go <laughs> and allowed the front end to turn. Not terribly beefy, so yeah, you wouldn't really want to go crazy with the uh, engine swapping something into this. Look at them U-joints are kind of small. So yeah, that's probably why I'll just stick with a four-cylinder engine if I do swap it. I should be able to clean that up and re-weld it. Something else that was neat about this, it actually had a roll bar on it. And if you look at this, it's pinned to where you can actually pull these pins out and remove the roll bar. You can see, obviously, somebody's cut it up. Uh, I will probably save these pieces. So I can actually build another roll bar for it. Uh, the seats are actually in there with pins as well. Well, these ones have bolts. But the, the pasture seat has pins in it, so... Uh, but at any rate, I'm going to shut up and uh, get this thing cleaned out and maybe try to evaluate what's going on with that transmission and engine. All right, I got the seats and all the seat belts out. I know that's not conductive, conducive, conductive, whatever, to getting, figuring out the condition of the engine and transmission. But uh, if I know anything, I know that this is going to turn into a long-term project, which means it's going to sit around a lot out in the weather. So I want to get all this debris, dirt, sticks, leaves out of here to mitigate any future rust. Okay, so the more I look at this, yeah, someone's patched this in with angle iron. Um, they've redone the dash, some angle and whatnot. So I'm thinking, initially I thought rollover. But now I would think a rollover would have got clear down into here and done some damage with this. You know, in order for that roll cage to get pushed over enough to mess all this up. So I'm thinking, yeah, this was uh, somewhat uh, crunched by the military before it was sold to the public. Somebody got their hands on it and started rebuilding it. Uh, right now I'm going to get this gas tank out because it is a mess. It is unusable. I don't know if that's going to pick up anything down in there. It's not just rusty. There's actually piles of rust chips in there. You can see by the cap. That's no good, so I just as well get it out of there so I can uh, clean up that floor underneath. Then I'll get to pulling that cover off. All right, so I got it cleaned out, although you can't tell it now. This is the only part that really didn't clean out, so I went ahead and uh, took a hole saw and put a hole in the floor there. I'll hit it again. But anyway, back to the real issue here. Um, the cover for the transmission I actually had to cut into pieces because I could not get it off of there. It came loose, but yeah, the way the dash is bent and the fact that the shifter was stuck, I could not get it worked off of there, so I had to cut it into pieces, and this is what I found. I assumed this would thread off, but it does not, or if it's supposed to, I can't get it to budge. I started tapping on it with a hammer, and as you can see, it's very pitted and rusty. When I started tapping on it, where it had kind of rusted through there, it shook the rust loose, water started dripping out. So that is not a good sign, but I still cannot get that off of there. So I think my next step is I'm going to pull the whole top cover off the transmission. I've got the starter off already. Starter sits right in here. And we'll see what we find. I'm betting that thing is full of water. Oh, not looking good in there. Oh, that's nasty. Yeah. Yikers. Okay, well, um, at this point, 
I think what I probably need to do, maybe try to get that transmission separated from the engine and see if the engine is locked up itself. Show you something else that's interesting underneath check this out the a arms have been torched every one of them to some degree this one didn't go all the way through you can tell uh, i'm guessing that was part of the process of demilitarizing it doing some damage to the body and then cutting the suspension yeah apparently whoever got hold of this after it was sold to the public patched these back together and tried to repairing the body to some degree. All right, folks, back at it again with the M151A2 MUT. Uh, I've taken uh, steps here to isolate the engine from, as you've seen, this nasty locked up transmission. Okay, in order to get to the crank bolt, I had to pull out the radiator. I'm trying not to destroy anything here in case this engine is viable. Uh, but yeah, I did the studs holding the radiator in the bottom here uh, The top half of the bolt or stud or whatever was encased in a rubber bushing And of course it spun so I had to grind those studs off. This is kind of a neat design This whole unit, I guess you could call it a whole unit engine transmission and even the radiator designed to come out together because this uh, This kind of a cradle I guess for lack of a better word holds on to the bottom of the radiator and it's even attached at the top here so yeah, you could pull the whole damned uh, power unit out of there, I guess is what I call it. Um, now then, once I did get the radiator out of the way, I found the water pump is locked up. You know, this water neck here is <laughs> damn near corroded off. And then I figured, well, I'd go ahead and get the belts off so I know the generator isn't an issue too, because it is locked up as well. Now, I wasn't sure whether the clutch disc would be stuck to the flywheel or not. I've got the clutch disengaged here using the stick. Plus, I've got this pry bar jammed in there against the throwout bearing and held back with a ratchet strap. You can definitely see a gap there between the pressure plate and the clutch disc and I can get a thick feeler gauge up in there for all the distance I can reach. It's a good halfway uh, around so that's a pretty good indication that the clutch is not stuck to the engine. So the engine is all on its own now I did go ahead and pull the plugs out and while there is some rust on them There's no rust actually on the electrodes, which that is a very good sign. So anyway now is the time Let's get a uh, breaker bar on that front crank bolt and see what happens Oh damn it turns in quite easily, too. Pour some vinegar in this gearbox see if I can get it freed up I can't make it any worse you've seen it I got nothing to lose other than the ten dollars I got in vinegar now the reason this thing wasn't full of water was because it's leaking out down there so the water would get in but it would get back out as well so the vinegar is doing the same thing so I'm basically pouring it in here and then catching it down there in a two gallon container holds not quite two gallons so yeah every once in a while when i get time and think of it i'll come out here take the container out from under and just pour it right back in there we'll give it some time see if it frees up even if it does free up i'm sure it won't be like totally useful and great but you know maybe it'll get uh, freed up enough i can possibly use it 
Probably not. Check it out, folks. It's actually, I've got it moving. Uh, it is the next afternoon since I put this stuff in. I've been able to get it to turn, what, maybe about five or six teeth worth either way. Let's see if I got this going the right way. I've also got this uh, shifter ring, clutch, dog, whatever you want to call it. I've got that freed up, but I have not been able to get this one freed up yet. Yeah, that's more than last time. I've just been, yeah, getting this thing going and keeping the uh, vinegar refreshed in it. I'll just go off and uh, work on something for a while and come back and dink with this. Oh yeah. That's the most I've got out of it yet. Maybe I'll get a full rotation out of it. Oh, there we go. Seized up there. Yep, maybe. I don't know if the camera's picking it up, but that is actually starting to move a little bit. All right, so I come out here every once in a while, take a break from working on other things, come out here and jimmy with this thing. I've got this one working pretty damn slick, if I say so myself. Uh, this shifter ring here, I can get it to move all the way back and forth, but it's not nearly as free as this one. Probably just because it's harder to get in there and work with that one. There's much room to get in there and not as much stuff to get hold of, but I'm going to keep at it. All right, I think my work here is pretty much done. I got everything freed up as good as I thought I was going to. Uh, there's two drain plugs down here. There's one underneath on this uh, in and out for the front drive, and then there's one up here towards the front. I pulled those both, dumped out the vinegar, and then I dumped in, what was it, about four gallons of water to flush all the nastiness out. It's about, yeah, it took four gallons before what started coming out the bottom was clean. Um, and then I put damn near a whole can of WD-40 in there to try to uh, flush the water out, the remaining water out of there, and then get the WD-40 work down into the crevices and whatnot. You know, I don't know how well WD-40 counteracts vinegar, but eh, it's better than nothing. I'm going to let it go ahead and drip out until tomorrow afternoon. I'll put the plugs back in and then try to put some gear oil in it. Then we'll see about getting this thing running now that I got the transmission freed up. It looks like it might turn into a viable project. Well, it's been a couple of days. Let's see if this thing is still free. The thing about using vinegar to free up rusty stuff, you got to get that vinegar flushed off, washed out, neutralized somehow, or it'll rust your original metal 
right back or maybe even worse than it was before. Oh man, what's going on here? Get a bigger pry bar. All right, let's try this again. Okay. But I think right now I'm going to see if I can get this freed up. I've had the vinegar sitting in here for two days. Look at that nastiness that it's brought out. Go clamp that in the vise, see if I can't get these uh, shifter mechanisms freed up now. All right, with some careful use of this here brass punch and hammer, so far I have managed to get the center rail freed up. Alright, I've got all three of the shift rails freed up and I've got it working with the shifter for these two rails, but I think, let's see here, let me demonstrate. This one should be, oh, it ain't gonna do nothing now. There. It's not a very slick shifter. I don't know what that has to do between the design and the rust, but the, anyway. This should be first and second, right? Third and fourth. Now this should be reverse, if I'm not mistaken. And it does actually try to move the rail, but I can't get any kind of meaningful movement out of it. I'm getting a little bit more. Apparently, I just gotta keep working at it.
Well, it's been about a month since I worked on this. Well, in earnest, anyway. It's been in here a couple weeks now. I've just kind of been putzing around with it, getting ready to try to start it. Um, got the plugs pulled out, put a little oil in the cylinders. I threw away the air filter, the generator. I got the pulley off the front water pump, see if I could get it freed up. It is freed up, but it turns really hard. It's, it's a lost cause. Well, it still takes a pipe wrench to turn it. But anyway, I've got two batteries here to make 24 volts. Got the starter back in it. One connection left to make. Let's hook that up and see if it lets all the magic smoke out. If there's any magic to be had in this thing. I'm not too sure how good this battery is. I had to put it on a charger. Well, that connection could be better, but still, let's see what happens. Spark plugs are back in. I'm going to see how well it'll crank with some compression. Hopefully, it's going to make compression. Uh, I've got that pretty close. Let's see if I can get some spark out of it, too. Okay, key is on. <laughs> Well, I heard a popping over there. I guess it runs. Looks like I gotta take that carburetor off and do something with it now. If I'm being honest here, I really want this thing to fail. I have an engine swap idea that I've been wanting to do for a few years now, and this seems like a pretty good candidate for it. I won't get into what that is right now because it's kind of laughable, but it's something I just want to try. But I'm still gonna give this a fair shake. Seems like the engine might be kind of sound. Well, that's kind of nasty, but honestly, I have seen worse, and I expected that to be worse. But I just remembered I had this Makuni. I don't know what application this is off of. I bought this at a swap meet several years ago and had it on a Suzuki LJ20. It still looks pretty clean, but this uh, choke plunger is stuck. If I can get that freed up, I might just uh, you know, make an adapter flange there. Because it looks like it's pretty much the same, if I could get in there, about the same throat size there. Two cats enter, one cat leaves. Two cats enter, one cat leaves. So who's this guy that you sent me on here that died? Smitty. I didn't know if you knew him or not. No. Toot is victorious. <laughs> All hail Toot. <laughs> yes, yes indeed. I think this will do quite nicely.
think the carb is actually working. Maybe I need to take the bowl back off and uh, clean out the passages in it. So the carb wasn't even getting any fuel into the bowl at all. Um, I pulled the needle out, couldn't get carb cleaner sprayed through there. Brought it out here to blow out the passageway. I was standing here, put air in it right there. Something went pop, and I heard something over there go pop, pop, pop. I didn't see any clouds of dust kick up or anything, but uh, apparently that was the needle seat that blew out there. It's out there somewhere. Wish me luck in finding it. Well, hey, the carb's back on there. You'd think that'd be good news. No, I tried looking for that part for a while. I figure it's a lost cause. If I had any idea which direction it went or how far it went, I could keep looking, but I think it's a waste of time. What I decided to do was put the bowl back on, and at least now I can get fuel into the bowl uh, with my little squirty bottle. I fill it up there, and there's an overflow tube that's built into the bowl. So when it's full, it'll flow right on out. So right now the bowl is full. Let's see if it'll run now. Indeed it will. Kind of surprised it didn't run longer than that. I figured no more fuel than this would use that bowl of fuel would last longer than that. Well, I filled it up several times now, started up, let it run, throttled it up, idled, whatever, just, you know, trying to get a general idea if, if a problem is going to arise with the engine, but it seems like a solid engine, so I, I'm afraid I'm going to have to go forward with this. Yeah, it has a uh, push button for a starter on the floor, and it's inconveniently placed right underneath the clutch pedal. <laughs> So I decided to check the oil after I had it running. It really brought out the milkshake in it. I think what I really should do before I put any more uh, effort or money into this, I might just go ahead and pop the radiator back in there, put the hoses on. Sure, the water pump doesn't work, but just fill it up with coolant just to make sure everything's going to hold coolant. Yeah because there was no coolant in it when I took the radiator out. Maybe the block is cracked somewhere. I don't know, maybe somebody drained it. The radiator looks okay, but the hoses are just dry and hard. And yeah, I just don't want to pour a bunch of money into this just to find out in a little while that it was a whole waste of 
time and effort and I should have just pulled it out but yeah that's the risk you take with any of this crap well it's uh, another couple days later uh, the motorcycle carburetor was just kind of curious if that would work and it did I sure wish I hadn't lost that needle seat because uh, I decided I was going to go ahead and do something with the original carb yes I sure did this right here the hanger area for the float was so crusty and corroded I had a hell of a time trying to get that uh, pin out and ended up breaking that corroded ear off. Which wasn't really a huge deal because this part of the carburetor, there to go, right? There. The corner of that is broken off. I'm assuming it got water in and it froze up and cracked it because that's not something I did. It's not fresh brake. I don't know what that is. It's almost like it's like an accelerator pump, but there's no uh, linkage to run it. So maybe it's sort of a power valve. Kind of a shame because it looks like a really simple carburetor. But uh, anyway, I decided I was going to go ahead and put gear oil in the transmission and get the cover and shifter assembly back on. Uh, I did that and I found a massive leak which is why it had no gear oil in it in the first place and the water that was getting in it was getting back out. Let me show you what I found there. These are the two yokes. Obviously there's significant wear on those. This one here, I can feel it, both of them. This one you can only see, but you can feel this one. Um, what I'm gonna do, I've measured it for uh, some new seals. Yeah, this is the problem with uh, old military and, and weird old stuff is uh, parts can be hard to get. I don't know if that seal is something I can get at the parts store. I got measurements. That's the outside diameter right there. It's right around two and an eighth of an inch. I'm going to take these with me so I got that measurement. And then what I'm also going to do here is just smear these uh, worn down areas with JB weld and sand it down. I could put a speedy sleeve on it, but I've done this before with axle shafts with pretty good results. But uh, check this out. See the difference? This is the one that was leaking. See what's going on here? I think probably most, if not all, of the leak came through the splines and this missing metal cap. I'm going to see if the parts store has anything like that. I'm really wanting to drive this thing. Even with, you know, no cooling system, I'm going to have to cobble up something for a fuel system or whatnot. But uh, isn't that always the goal with these revivals is to, to drive it? Alrighty, here, the parts store had this nice little freeze plug that was pretty much the perfect size, just not quite tight enough fit. So I went ahead and uh, slathered it down with JB Weld. Got the worn down spots all smeared full of JB Weld on both yokes. Once that dries, I'll go to them with some uh, sandpaper, emery cloth, whatever I got, get them all smoothed out. They did manage to find some seals, but had to order them. Uh, by my dimensions anyway, they may not be right. I'm hoping to have these done and try them out and maybe not even have to buy the seals because they're going to be like, I don't know, 12 something a piece. Not a lot of money, but uh, I'm a little uh, shell-shocked after doing that uh, F-250 revival and all the money and time I put into that and it turned out to be a gutless turd, to be honest. And uh, yeah, that was, I can't say it was a total waste. I can put another engine in it. I might someday. Yeah, I'm trying to keep this one on the cheap until I figure out just how good the entire vehicle is going to be. It's just too damn bad that engine runs so good in it. Otherwise, I'd have pulled it all out and repowered it. But uh, we shall press on. All right, there's how the yokes turned out. And actually, the other one, when I went to uh, sand the JB wheel down, it actually took... The other groove out, so maybe it was just a stain or something. Or maybe I just used too aggressive of sandpaper and it took it down. I did get some seals. Um, I don't know, like I said, I'm not going to use them yet. I'm going to put these in the way they are. Hopefully the uh, JV weld and putting the cap on there will take care of it. Uh, if the engine performs good on the test and the gearbox is quiet and functions fine, I'll go back later and I'll probably actually put repair sleeves over this and then put the seals in. But hopefully for now, I'm trying to keep this cheap. Got the yokes back on, poured the gear oil back in it. I'm going to let it sit, see if it's going to leak. If 
it does leak, I guess I'll have to resort to putting the seals in and maybe do the sleeves now. Or if it leaks that bad. Uh, also today, earlier, I went over to the next town over. There's a motorcycle shop there. Uh, the parts counter, they were trying to help me, but as I expected, they needed to know what exactly the carburetor came off of, and I had no idea. I picked it up at a swap meet. But uh, the one guy, he was trying to help. He was bringing up rebuild kits for McCoonies and kind of getting some success. But then this other guy showed up, I'm assuming as a mechanic, because he was all dirty and whatnot, and he, he saw what he was doing. Well, I got a tub of miscellaneous parts left over, you know, out and such and such. So a couple minutes later, he came back with it. And yeah, he's he's like, blah, 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 talking, you know, about this, that, and the other, and, you know, terms that I was not even familiar with from the Coonies and whatnot and this and that. But I'm like, yeah, this is the guy I wanted to find that knows shit about McCoonies. Um, we did end up finding a needle and seat out of that box that he had. They're not the ideal correct ones, but thinking I can make it work. Then he asked what I was putting it on. I told him this little four cylinder engine on this little military vehicle. So he, he starts going into how, you know, we need to rejet this on it. I'm like, no, 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 no. This is just a temporary thing to get it running long enough. I can take it for a drive and decide what else I'm going to do with it. I'm going to run it on propane if I continue with the drivetrain that's in it. Well, it's been a day now. The leak is not entirely gone, but it is way, way better. So that's good enough for now until I decide what I'm going to do with this thing as an end plan. You may have noticed I got my welding hat on. While I was underneath there, I decided to go ahead and pull that broken axle shaft out. I got it all beveled out. I think I got it pretty well sitting level. I'm the old calibrated eyeball, so now I'm going to tack it together and uh, burn it down good. Well, not exactly a stack of dimes, but uh, I think it turned out pretty good. It looks worse than what it really does for some reason on the camera. But again, better than it was. Kitty, what's wrong with you today? All right, I got the axle shaft back on. Did this uh, fine gravity feed setup here. <laughs> and uh, as I mentioned, the carburetor, the jet had the right, not the jet, the seat and the needle had the right diameter. Uh, the height, overall height, seemed pretty good. It's just the, uh, the hold down mechanism. Uh, I had to make a spacer and a longer screw for that. So hopefully that will work now with the gravity feed there. Yeah, that, that's definitely wobbly, but I'm only going to put very little fuel in it anyway when the time comes. Got the shifter and top cover back on, but for some reason, let me get there. Well, I can't even get first now, but I definitely cannot get reverse. I don't know what that's all about. Maybe it's just one of these transmissions. It's really hard to. You know, everything get lined up to get reversed, maybe not. Gonna try it anyway. But at this point, even though the uh, water pump is locked up, I'm gonna go ahead and put the radiator in and fill it with water just to see if it actually holds water. And if it does, then uh, I'll go ahead and order a new water pump and that water neck. That's gonna be the tough part. So there's not much left there on that bottom. Now the bushings here were pretty rotten and there was a couple missing so I just cut some new ones out of uh, some conveyor belt material and as far as the bolts these were the ones that were in it that I had to grind off I don't know what it was with the allen head I'm guessing that's not original this made more sense to me using a carriage head bolt in there Oop, let me get in there so it's right in there and then the uh, yeah the uh, I don't know what that's called, but yeah, the square locking part fits right into that just perfectly. So I think that'll work out pretty damn good. Radiator sitting in there temporarily. This hose I actually got hooked up. It is hard, but it did uh, get on there. This one, the top one, yeah, it is totally snarfed. Uh, went out to the shed, found this hose, cut a piece out and made the right shape. Unfortunately, it's too big. So as you can see, I got her crunched down with the hose clamps. 
again, I'm just putting water in this to see if there's any obvious blatant leaks that will uh, take this engine out of contention of uh, continuing on. Anyway, I'll get some water poured in there, see what happens. I got two gallons in there. I'm not seeing any leaks. Not even right under here. Not feeling anything. Now I couldn't start this up and pressurize it anyway because look, you know, if you didn't notice already, the cap is uh, kind of nasty. Uh, even if I did, was able to put the cap on, I bet that would blow right there. I would think this thing would have held more than two gallons, but yeah, it might be an air pocket trapped in there somewhere. You got to have it running to get it purged out. But uh, that, that's a good sign. Now I'm going to leave it this way, maybe overnight, maybe for a couple of days, just to see if it like slowly leaks into the engine crankcase. As we've already established, there was some water in there already. But it really wasn't, there's the full mark right there. And it wasn't just barely over the full mark. So I'm thinking what little water got in there, probably got in through rain, maybe up here through these grommets, cap or something. But uh, we'll let it sit for a couple days, see what happens. All right, one more update before I call tonight out here. I am getting some leaks. Let me show you. I was uh, working on the carburetor. I went ahead and hooked up the fuel tank, put a little fuel in it, and the carburetor overflow was leaking. I had to go in there a couple times, tweak the float level on the carburetor. Seems to be doing good now, but while I was doing that, I noticed a couple things developing in the cooling. So as you can see here, it looks to be coming from the bottom side of the water pump there somewhere. I can't feel a weep hole there. Maybe there's some sort of a crack or something. Maybe there's just a weep hole there that I just can't see. Or oh, wait a minute. Yeah. I think there's one right there. There's a bunch of crud kind of disguising it. But anyway, no big deal with the water pump. I thought I was going to have to replace that anyway if uh, I do continue on with this uh, power plant. Looks like I might have a spot here on the radiator. One of the seams might be leaking. Get some light in there. That ain't enough, is it? But anyway, you can kind of see where it's wet there. Uh, initially, I thought maybe it was that hose leaking through and the water was just kind of wicking its way up there. But now there's, there's just an ever so slight leak right there. So far, the uh, oil level in the engine has not risen any. So that's... Kind of a good sign that I don't have any cracks in the block, but uh, at this point I am just going to go ahead and leave the water in it tonight. I'll check it tomorrow, see how bad the leaks are, and then uh, give me a better idea if there's anything uh, getting into the engine crankcase from there. It is now the next afternoon. I've come out here and checked on this. And while the water level in the radiator has gone down, it does not seem to have went into the crankcase. Where are we at here? There we go. Alright folks, it's been a couple more weeks past. Uh, I'm really wanting to drive this thing and wrap this video up. But it's just not happening. I've got a new water pump, new thermostat and thermostat housing. So I've got maybe about $170 in this thing now. This thing is turning into a huge money pit. Um, as you can see, the radiator is still missing. That's what's holding me up. I left the radiator off probably a little more than two weeks ago. I told the guy I'm in no hurry. A week or so is fine. Said he'd call me when it was ready. Now, I don't know what is going on here lately. Like in the past month, I've had this happen like four times something was ready or someone was supposed to call me or send me some sort of a notification nobody has been contacting me i have to go looking for it so maybe the radiator's done and i'm gonna have to go check check it out i don't know maybe it isn't done doesn't matter it's not here it's holding me up but i've used that time to do other things now i've played with the carburetor a little bit as you saw it does run on it um i went ahead and hooked up this throttle Made this uh, fancy pants little bracket, hooks right under the intake, and clamped it together with this. Seems to work pretty slick, I would say. Get my foot in here. Boom! 
Now, I've played with this a couple more times since I filmed, and the carburetor has a hard time dropping back down to idle. I'd have just to open the throttle up and let it snap shut. And I think what was going on here is this carburetor has so much more airflow going through it than what it's designed to, that the, uh, the round slide in here, all the airflow is actually jamming the round slide into the housing and not letting it come shut all the way. Uh, I went to the local hardware store and I bought an additional spring to put in here and that seems to have fixed that problem. I've also taken some time to put this seat in it. A friend stopped by a couple weeks ago. He was on his way to take some scrap in somewhere, so he had a trailer load of scrap. Me being me, it was kind of like... Ooh, a piece of candy. 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 So yeah, I was picking through this trailer like, ooh, can I have that? And then I also got, yeah, this other lawnmower tank that I'm going to mount temporarily while I drive it, if I ever get the chance to drive it, right there. It will be much more stable than that mower tank I had strapped to the top of the engine. And I got a couple other things off his trailer too. And I know I've never even mentioned or showed that I've looked at the brakes, but they're right here is the master cylinder, and obviously it doesn't have any brakes. The one time I did go to check this, yeah, it's all busted and broken, and uh, as we've already established, this thing's been sitting outside for years. I don't know how many years, but uh, this is kind of like the transmission, I'm guessing, whereas the water was getting into the transmission and draining right on through it. I'm guessing there's a massive leak in the system somewhere, because if there's no brake fluid in it, and it's been sitting out in the open, and rainwater has surely been finding its way in there, but it's finding its way back out again. I'm not going to put any money into these brakes. There is that uh, emergency brake right there on the transmission. Once I finally do get a chance to drive this, I will just rely on that for now. If I go ahead and do something more with this vehicle, uh, it has drums all the way around. Those are going to go bye-bye. I don't waste money on drum brakes. They get converted to discs. And I got a couple ideas on how to do that. I believe this bolt pattern, I've measured it, and it is a five on five and a half, just like common Ford, um, Jeeps, Scouts. So uh, yeah, Geo Trackers, that's kind of what I'm thinking. I'll try to adapt some Geo Tracker brakes onto this. But uh, moving on, I did start to fix this floor here where the batteries sit. And as you can see, I have the top cover off of the transmission again, investigating why I cannot get it into reverse. It does not seem to be an internal issue with the transmission. It's something to do with the shifter getting jammed up. So that's kind of what I'm out here doing today. Okay, so here's what I've found. The rail, which is this one here for reverse, is moving freely. I can't really show you because I don't have enough hands. But uh, rest assured, it is moving. But what I think is going on here See if I can show you right here at the tip of the screwdriver that appears to be some sort of a spring-loaded button that the shifter will actually engage when it needs to engage this rail. As you can see, here's the other end with a snap ring on it, looks like. I'm assuming that is a spring-loaded button that allows the, uh, the end of the shifter here as it goes through the housing, comes through its pivot point, and the end of that shifter, the inside end, should depress that button and fall into this groove. Well, that button is seized up quite well. I cannot move it with this screwdriver. That goes back to earlier in the video when I was talking about the vinegar inside the gearbox. Once everything's freed up, you have to neutralize that vinegar, get it out of there, neutralize it, whatever, or it's going to seize things back up, maybe even worse than it was before. And I think that's what's going on here. Uh, I think at this point, I'm just going to keep soaking it with some sort of a penetrating oil. Yeah, I've got time till my radiator's done. Well, things didn't go to plan. I got a little impatient and I decided to put some heat to it to see what would happen. As you can see, Hopefully, I did get it freed up, but it is still very notchy, and as you can plainly also see, the spring is not returning it. So the spring is either rusted away to nothing, or maybe me heating it up helped put the uh, final, final nail in its coffin, so to speak. Uh, as you can see, I've also, I've taken this plug out. I'm going to go ahead and drive 
the rail completely out of this and the housing. Take this out, clean it up, get a new spring in it, put it all back together. Well, here it is. Let's see if I can show you. There was this spring inside. The spring was intact, but yeah, me heating up the body of this right in there where the spring was seated must have made it lose its temper and it collapsed. I tried stretching it out, but it just collapses again the first time you compress it, but uh, it goes just like that. And as that little, the end of the lever would push on the button, it would let the uh, end of the shifter fall into this groove and the shifter could do its job as this slid on the rail. Um, there is, where'd that go? A, uh, it's not showing very well, right? Yeah, right in there. There's a little ball and detent that seems to be stuck. I don't know that it's absolutely necessary. I think that just kind of gives this more of a crisper feel when it does uh, snap back out of reverse. It would just make it stop there, but it doesn't need to be there for a stop because it should have this little snap ring on it, which I also have to replace. I think the heat boogered that up too. But anyway, I will just get a spring for this tomorrow. This is a good opportunity if I can get enough light in it. A lot of people don't understand or never get to see how these old four speeds work. Now that right, if you look at it right there, sorry the lighting isn't great. I tried to get the best spot I could in my shop. The end of that shifter right there, this is the pivot point. So as you're moving the, the handle into the shifter, it goes through the pivot point and it moves this end in the opposite direction, obviously because of this pivot point here. Again, sorry about the lighting. Let's see, right there. That is the end, the little nub on the end of the shifter that should engage this notch. So when you're shifting, depending on where this shifter is, is in relation to which rail that it's engaging. As it pivots this like this. Understand? I hope so, because I can't do any better job of explaining it. I've understood how they work, but I, honestly, I have never actually had one of these apart till now. Never had any reason to. Kitty got his seat clean, because I was contemplating using this uh, $5 suspension seat that I got at Iola, Wisconsin in this, but I decided on this one instead. But I did vacuum out the seat in preparation, but now I won't be using it. So you get to keep your bed for now, okay, kitty? So you're getting dirty again already. I'm too good to you. There is the spring that I got. It was actually just a little bit too big in diameter. And... I had to open this up with a 9 16 drill bit, but uh, it is working now. I did have to trim the spring down, but uh, let's see here if I can do this without hurting myself. New E-clip on the back, it is ready to install. Well folks, let me show you uh, how stupid I am. I got it all put back together, as you can see. The little button there works great. You see what's wrong here? I got that put together out of the channel. And this is what happens, if I can show you. I don't have enough hands. Yeah, it rotates. What's going on here, it's not showing very well, but there's a shoulder right there. It's supposed to be down into this machined area. <sighs> and look at this. I Loctited the hell out of that, and the Loctite already set up, and I tried getting it out. Chewed it all up with the vice grips. Uh, I'll probably have to heat that Loctite up to break it loose. There might be enough left there to grab with the vice grips. I don't know. What's that, uh? old saying about uh, at least I can be used as a bad example. All right, let's take what is hopefully the final look at what's going on here. It 
Now, uh, this obviously had safety wire on it, like these, but uh, I was debating whether to put a safety wire on it, but I guess that's out of the question now that I buttered it up. Alright, a few more days have went by. Uh, honestly, I'm kind of not getting in too big a hurry with this thing because I was hoping for my test drive to have some snow to go play in. But from the weather reports I'm seeing, it's not calling for snow for the next couple of weeks anyway. As you just saw, I'm doing a little patchwork here on the floor. Not surprisingly, I'm using scrap metal. And that's why this piece doesn't cover the entire hole. I'll have to make another strip in here to cover that up. Uh, here was a learning moment for me, which I should have known better. That was so terrible, I think you gave me cancer! There's obviously, as you can see, two layers of sheet metal there. And I cleaned this inside layer of sheet metal to weld to it, and it did actually weld, but the impurities, I suppose the rust from between the two layers there, boiled out into the, the uh, weld before it solidified. It was, uh, yeah, as you can see, it's pretty nasty. Not quite so bad on this end, but yikes, that is horrible. Other stuff going on. I now can get reverse. There we go. So that's good. I did decide to go ahead and change the oil. Seems how this is looking like it might be a viable engine. Let's see here, it's been draining. Pull the pan out. Yeah, it looked a lot worse than that when it was coming out. I actually did get a little bit of water at first, not surprisingly. Yeah, here's what was below. <laughs> that was on the top. Generally, if I can't burn something in my oil burner, I just dump it out here on the dirt part of my shed to keep the dust down. And my radiator is done. Went and picked this up yesterday. The guy said it was leaking right here, just like I thought. And he said it was also there was a leak down here where the, the metal strap comes around underneath. He fixed all that, got the strap reattached, and I had him put a normal sized cap on it, instead of that big monster thing. So I go through phases where I really get into a totally cheap bastard mode, and this is one of those phases right now. Uh, to replace the oil in that, if you remember, if you watch this video, I have hardly any runtime on this engine at all after I change the oil in it before I park this thing. So I'm gonna pull the, uh, what should be, fairly new oil out of this to put in that m151 and because you know there's still going to be some residue from that uh water contaminated oil in there so th you know in a way that kind of makes sense too and then after i run this through it i'll go ahead and give it another uh, oil change with nice fresh oil as an additional benefit i don't know this for sure i'm thinking the oil filter off that m151 sure looks like an fl1a or equivalent, the FL1A is a Ford part number, but I'm betting that that oil filter will fit as well. Frankly, I'm kind of surprised with how dirty this oil is for no longer than it's been in there. Why won't it focus? But nonetheless, I'm gonna continue on with this plan. Other than the height issue, they sure look like the same filter to me. And I think it'll pick it up, yeah, right in there, that milky looking substance right in there. I think that perfectly illustrates why I'm putting the used oil in it, because every surface inside this engine is coated with a layer of that crap. So why put good oil in it just to have to have it carry that out? Dump this used oil in it, run it a little bit, dump it out, and it should get what's left of all that uh, milkiness out of there, in theory anyway. The floor is officially finished as it's going to get. Uh, this seam along here, yeah, that was the same as up in here. 
Uh, there were two pieces of sheet metal that come together, and there was rust between them. It actually welded pretty good. I had a couple spots where, yeah, impurities would boil up through it, but yeah, nothing near as bad as in this corner. I'm not going to worry about these old torch cuts. I figure those will just be, make for some nice drains. What do you think, Katie? Sniff, sniff. All right, what I'm doing now before I put the radiator in, as you may recall, the generator was locked up. Now that I got a water pump, I need to spin it. That's kind of the whole point of uh, having a cooling system, you know. I've got this uh, tensioner idler pulley doohickey. I'm guessing this is probably off of a uh, 460 engine from a car. This is probably the tensioner for an air conditioning pump. Uh, I can't show you because I don't have enough hands, but I believe this hole here lines up quite nicely right there. I should be able to just uh, trim this whole plate off here. And hopefully just use that. Sure, there won't be a charging system, but at least I'll be able to, you know, tighten up the belt. I probably could go to the parts store and just find a belt that would be tight enough to work both of those. But, uh, yeah, I'm in cheap-ass mode, so I'm going to use the belt that's already here. So it's in pretty decent shape. Well, it didn't quite go to plan, but it's in there. Uh, it had like a little step in it, the original bolt I was going to use, but that put it way too far forward. I re-drilled this, cut it off, got it on the flat, and still had to put a couple of washers in there. Now, uh, ideally, you should run maybe a brace down to here, maybe one even over here, but uh, this is just going to be temporary anyway. If I decide to make this some sort of a long-term vehicle, I'm going to have to do something about a charging system, so something's going to have to go in here, whether I try to put the 24-volt generator back in, or ideally, if I do keep this as a long-term vehicle, I want to try to convert this to 12-volt. But for now, this will do. Radiator's in. They're all turn-off seems to be working. Got my uh, new, uh, improved fuel system on. As I said before, I was kind of waiting, wanting to get some snow to play in, but I, it just ain't going to happen. We did get some rain yesterday, but not very much. Maybe they will just grease it up a bit. I don't know. Got a uh, GoPro mount put on it, and it is you know, picking it up, but this thing is running rich. It's amazing considering how small that carburetor is. But running it is. Let's have some fun. Finally. bunch of uh, sticks, twigs, and debris that are getting uh, all burnt up down in there. It's actually kind of surprisingly rippy, especially in second gear. Um, doesn't ride near as bad as I thought it would. 
the handbrake, the emergency brake, parking brake, whatever you call it, is uh, frighteningly effective. It locks those rear tires up, no problem at all.
Well, let's uh, take stock of the damage. Obviously, I crunched that. Pushed the fender in, bent the bumper. Crunch this up a little bit more. Looks like, yeah, I scraped her along there pretty good. I know I got this into a tree, but it didn't seem to do any damage. I don't think I'm driving out of here anyway. my assessment of this thing for a wheeling rig as it is right now it really sucks listen you stop those little shit i was taking shrapnel on the case side while you were crapping in your hands and rubbing it on your face now hold on there chief i was just getting ready to blame the tires not you yeah i think maybe with a good set of like a little set of tractor tires and weld the rear end i think this would be a total little beast as it is right here, there are spots in there that I'm surprised it got stuck, and there's other spots I'm surprised it made it through at times. But that's wheeling, I guess. Well, what do you guys think? What do you think I should do with this thing? I'd kind of like to make it into a little wheeling rig. Tractor tires, weld rear end, roll cage, change it out to 24 volt, or sorry, change it out to 12 volt, and put propane on it, or a different carburetor setup. As you notice, the carb was not kicking back down like it was. I had that fixed, but yeah, once I started driving it, it instead of just running in the shop, it all bets were off, I guess. It is a torquey little booger, I'll say that. I never stalled it. Anyway, thanks for watching, and until next time. Watch out for your cornhole, bud.